Thank you for tuning in to the newest episode of the Plain Bible Teaching Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Soker. This episode is being released on November 24th, 2022. And joining me again this week is Christopher Gardana, joining us from the great state of West Texas. And he's a good friend of mine, and he's been on the show a couple times now. And so it's glad to, or I'm glad to have him back once again. So Christopher, welcome back again to the show. Good to be here. And uh, I think my voice is a little bit better tonight. So, <laughs> Well, good, good. I'm glad you're doing better. Um, this episode actually is being released on Thanksgiving, Lord willing. So Christopher... And everyone else listening, happy Thanksgiving. I'm very thankful. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about tonight. So Right. Yeah. And Thanksgiving is, you know, we think about Thanksgiving as a time of, you know, enjoying family and enjoying food. But really the whole premise of Thanksgiving and the reason why it's always been my favorite holiday is that it's really about recognizing the blessings that we have from God and it's a reminder for us to be thankful to him. Not that this is the only day we do that, but it's a reminder that this is something that needs to be a priority for us. And that, and that's what we're talking about here in our episode here tonight. So the story we're going to be referencing, as well as some other materials that will be related to that, will be available in the show notes. You can check those out at plainbibleteaching.com slash podcast slash 1124 22. So now for our story this week. Expressing gratitude may be true key to happiness, survey suggests. From study finds, it says the secret to happiness may be expressing gratitude. A survey of 2,000 Americans examining, examining the potential connection between being thankful and contentment in life reveals that 65% of respondents who say they're very happy on a daily basis are also more likely to always give thanks. While looking at the correlation between life satisfaction and gratitude, a third of respondents say they regularly make sure to express gratitude in their everyday lives. Of those, 62% note they feel very satisfied with their lives. And further down in the article, it says there's a dramatic correlation between gratitude and happiness, says Logan Mallory, Vice President of Marketing at Motivocity in a statement. When people are proactive about being grateful, it rewires their brain to look for positives instead of negatives around them. Previous studies and, the, and these survey results tell us that if you want to experience an increase in life satisfaction, just express gratitude more often. So as we read that, and there's more information and statistics and everything in that article, you can check that out at the in the show notes if you want to read more about that. But when we think about what that was talking about and those survey results, when we look at the Bible, it's very clear that the people of God are to be a grateful or a thankful people. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 tells us that in everything, give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And there are many other passages like that one. And then you also have passages like Hebrews 13 and verse 5 that tell us to be content because God is going to be with us. And so we might wonder, as we look at those verses and also think about this, these survey results, are these attitudes and mindsets, that of gratitude and contentment, are they two totally separate ideas that are independent of one another, or are they necessarily and inherently tied together? So Christopher, I'll ask you this question to start us off. What does the Bible teach about the connection between gratitude and contentment? Well, the first verse that I was thinking of was in Philippians chapter 4, where Paul, while mentioning some real needs that he had, uh, was also trying to express uh, this idea of being content. In Philippians chapter 4, it says there I re in verse 10, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You indeed, uh, for it says you were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So 
it's an amazing thing how he's actually expressing how much need he's needed, how much he's needed, and that there have been times where there were those who wanted to help but they couldn't help, and he needed the help and they weren't able to, and you could you can understand how that that would be stressful. But then he's saying, you know, I'm so thankful and I'm counting my blessings that even though you weren't before, now you are able to. And um, no matter what situation I am, I, I try not to look at it as though I'm in need because I can do whatever God wants me to do. Whatever he needs me to do, he's going to help me do. And and there, there's that, I feel like that connection, that bond between, you know, gratitude for the help, but also recognizing that I have a lot to be thankful for no matter whether I have much or I have little. Yeah, it's a good point. And actually, we were kind of thinking along the same lines, because what I thought of was also Philippians chapter four, but a little bit earlier than that, where you look at, you know, he says in verse four, tells them to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And, you know, he's writing this from prison. And he's, as you mentioned in those verses in, you know, 10 through 13, that he's able to be content in the circumstances he's in. But he tells them in verse four to rejoice. And then in verses six and seven, he tells them to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So you have a really Philippians chapter four kind of, you know, in a lot of ways kind of covers all of this, where he tells them to rejoice. He tells them that he was content in those verses that you pointed out in whatever circumstances he was in. And I think that that idea where he mentioned there in verses six and seven really helps tie all of these ideas together that when we look at it for us and just like for the Philippians as he was writing to them, how were they able to have the same attitude that Paul had or that we are able to have the same attitude that Paul had? He says, you pray to God. You make your request known to God. You can have this peace, but there's something required to do that. He says, you make these requests with thanksgiving. So mm -hmm. when we think about praying to God and we we pray about the things that are that we're in need of and the things that where we need help and all of this, but we do this with thanksgiving, we are able to get that peace of God that that we're able to guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So all of this, you know, I think when we look at these ideas that they are not two totally separate things that are, you know, just not in any way related, that there is a necessary connection between them. And I think this passage of Philippians 4 that really ties all of this together. Yeah, and I really kind of appreciate that that you and I really do not discuss this before we get together and, and talk about this and and how we end up finding the same verse, you know, because um, we did not discuss this ahead of time. And so I didn't know where you were heading in scripture, but uh, clearly you can see the connection here between the two. And I really appreciate how you point out that he was in prison. And and here's a man who is in, not in prison because he did something he deserved to be in prison for, but because he is standing for the truth and there are those that want to do him harm. And in spite of it all, what do you see? You see gratitude, you see thanksgiving, you see appreciation to his brethren. Uh, I, I've never been in prison. I've never been anything even close to that. But have I been as thankful? Have I been as appreciative as, as Paul seems even right here in the midst of all these trials? It's, it's, it's an amazing example of what the Christians should be striving for. Not that any of us have reached that level, but that this is the perspective and this is how you maintain that perspective by coupling these two things together. I don't believe you can have real contentment without Thanksgiving, without gratitude, without, you know, contentment, without, you know, just, just looking at what you have, not what you don't have. Right. Yeah. I, it really comes down to, to recognizing, like you said there, what we have and the blessings that we have received from God. And so going back to to something that was mentioned in the article where they talked about how expressing gratitude helps us focus on positive things and not on negative things. So when we think about you know, from a from a biblical standpoint, biblical perspective, what what are your thoughts on on how expressing gratitude 
affects our outlook besides just you know the survey results how does it lead to you know this idea of expressing contentment whether it's to god in prayer or expressing contentment to others how does that lead to contentment or happiness well um kind of what we've already been saying i think i think when we're counting our blessings you know we sing a song count your many blessings name them one by one and it will surprise you what the lord has done i, I believe sometimes we take so many things for granted that that we fail to recognize what what a time we live in um you know my wife when she uh, her father was preaching overseas uh the place that they lived uh they had hot water i think it was every other day and it's because it was uh basically pumped from some central location to their house they weren't allowed to have an actual electric water heater or gas it was you know the the government decided who got hot water right mm -hmm. and so they had it like every other day and even in the winter you know so you know, you had to learn when to take a bath, when to do your laundry, whatever you, you were going to do. And we take we take hot water for granted. There are so many things that we take for granted. And if you were to sit back and think for a minute, you know, the fact that we have a thermostat on the wall that regulates temperature. It's nice to have a fire. It's nice to have other means of heat. But for the most part, isn't it wonderful just to be able to go say, I, I think I'm a little too cold and bump up the heat. And, it, and it, you know, what other time in history has that been something even kings could have? You know, we live like kings. We live like like royalty, even though, but we're as miserable as we can be because we can't, we're not grateful for anything. And and so, you know, there are some real practical reasons, you know. Um, yeah, um, am I, do I wish maybe I had more of this or more of that? Okay, I think we all suffer from that problem. But do I have what I need with food and clothing? You know, uh, with these, we should be content. Uh, you know, Paul tells Timothy in, in 1 Timothy 6 and verse 6, godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. You know, uh, I'm thankful to have food and clothing and a roof over my head, and, you know. Mm -hmm. and warmth in the winter right. yeah you know? yeah this time of year it's been cold here this week i don't know how cold it is in texas but it's in the 30s at night and it's, yeah. it's 40s today and 30s tomorrow yeah you know? yeah we've gotten a little bit cooler than that but um it's supposed to be a little bit warmer next week but it's you're right it's nice to have the thermostat and we have this has been the first year we've had one we've gotten an electric blanket now and oh. I didn't realize how nice an electric blanket would be. But but again, that's the that's the thing where you you're right, where we live like royalty, we live like kings, but we it's so easy for us to look at other people, the celebrities and and the you know the billionaires and millionaires that we look at what they have, think, well, we don't have what what they have, and we don't, and that's fine. But we do have, as you said, we have what we need. We have food and covering. And I think when we think about this idea of you know expressing gratitude, one of the things that I, or one of the verses that I was thinking of is over in Colossians chapter three, where Paul talks about singing. And I, you mentioned singing the song, you know, count your many blessings. But it says in Colossians 3, 16, that to let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. So we have this idea of singing. And we are, by doing that, we are verbalizing our thoughts and this, this singing we're, that we're doing it with thanksgiving. There's a reason why we sing and not just listen to someone speak you know we listen to sermons we we do that and not just read words on a page because that's something also that we can do but the idea of we are putting these things out there verbally ourselves that it helps reinforce the ideas of these songs but i think that principle is kind of contained in this that as we are speaking these things and verbalizing these things it helps wire it further into our into our minds that helps reinforce it where where we we remember it more than just well someone said it and or we have a fleeting thought but then we forget it again it helps us remember it more when when we are articulating it whether it's in songs or in prayers or just 
speaking about our blessings or expressing thanks to someone that about something they did that we appreciate, it helps to it helps us focus on things that are positive. And by verbalizing it, we're kind of reminding ourselves and our reminding our our inner self, our brain that this is something that's important. And so we it sticks with us then. I'm reminded, uh, I've got a couple other verses up here, but in Psalm 50, verse 14, it says, Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the Most High. And I was just thinking that, you know, part of that is acknowledging what God has done for you. And when you're busy acknowledging what God has done for you, it's kind of hard to feel sorry for yourself. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I speak from experience. I have really, I have a long experience of feeling sorry for myself. I'm sure we all have had moments where we feel bad for ourselves and start to feel poorly and start to think everything's against us. And and I think it, it, it it's basically just a lack of gratitude. And I've had to catch myself many times because I start to take certain things for granted and um, don't recognize what I really have. And the idea of uh, of thanksgiving in this verse has the idea of a praise, uh, a, a thank offering, the idea. And so, again, it's it's praising God for what he has done for us. That's what thanksgiving is. Right. Yeah, and I think you're right that all of us go through those times where we where we kind of get down and discouraged and and. When we go through hard times, it's easy to look at all of the negative things around us and all the reasons why, you know, we wish things were different or whatever it might be. But again, going back to, you know, Paul in Philippians chapter four, that you know, he said, you know, I can be content in any circumstance that I'm in. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy to do that, but right. it's by, you know, he tells them rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice pray and make your request known to God, do this with thanksgiving. And so he's kind of reinforcing this over and over and then using himself as an example. It's almost as if he's, he's kind of explaining what he had to do in order to be in that position that he had to really intentionally focus on this. And that's, that's something that really all of us at different times, it's going to be more difficult than others, but all of us need to be doing that. So, right. so yeah, all of us, verse, all of us will face those situations like that. Sure. And in that same verse, he says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So again, that's, there's an acknowledgement that I'm not, I'm not pulling myself up by my own bootstraps. I'm not, I'm not uh, content only because I just, I'm a, I'm a Gnostic or, or I'm some kind of stoic where I, you know, I'm, I'm just impervious to the world because I'm not allowing myself to have emotion Um, no, I'm just saying whatever situation I'm in, I've learned the knack. I think in one version, it says of being content, you know, this and whatever circumstance I am in, I know I can do it through him. He's going to give me the strength and I know he's going to have my best interest at heart and he's not going to let me be tempted beyond what I'm able. There's, there's, there's always going to be a way of escape. There's always going to be opportunity. We're always going to have all sufficiency and everything. To, to, to be generous and give, you know, there's so many other verses where he talks about this and it's all through Christ. And if your eyes are not fixed on him, it's going to be really hard to be content. It's going to be really hard to have peace. Um, and, and clearly again, this idea of offering to God Thanksgiving or this idea of paying our vows to the most high when we're in gr- ungrateful, uh, lack of gratitude, we're basically just not acknowledging everything that God has given us. And how do you think, how do you think he looks at that? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, you think about all that he has done and well, it's, you think about, you know, as a parent, you know, both of us are parents and you think of everything that we do for our children. And then sometimes it seems like, well, they don't, you know, pay attention to any of that. And they're, and all kids are like that. They go through stages where they just don't seem to great, be grateful. But we do the same thing when, with God. because of, When do they stop well, being that way? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> it, maybe it never stops. We'll see. But well, for us, you know, we always go through those periods. No, no matter how, you know, how long we live, it seems like we always go through those periods where we forget. We forget these things. 
And God is there, you know, still willing to bless us and still extending these blessings to us. And, and we still get in, into these funks where we're just like, we're just not looking at the good things, but we're just looking at, at the negatives and the, the things that discourage. We're focusing on, yeah, we're focusing on either things that we've lost, things that we had no, maybe some things that, that we've had no control over, which were out of our hands. And those moments cause us in some ways to despair if we're not careful, if we don't continue to remind ourselves what we still have and be, be thankful and grateful for what God has given us and continues to do for us. Um, you know, the last couple of years has been hard on a lot of families. Mm-hmm. I'll yeah. just leave it there. And, yeah. and you've seen some who draw closer to God and become more thankful and more grateful for the moments they get to spend with their loved ones. And you have others who, um, because of that loss, because of that change, um, uh, they don't continue to be thankful for what they have. They only despise what has changed mm-hmm. and become ungrateful. And instead of continuing to praise God and thank God for what he continues to do, we start to blame God for why it isn't the way we wish would wish it to be, you know, and you, you can fill in the blank of every, any situation that's happened in the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been a lot of changes and you've got to learn to recognize the grand scheme of things. And Paul was, I mean, here he is, instead of living his life the way he might want to, he's, he's, you know, sitting in uh, under house arrest or whatever you want to call it. And yet his only concern is for the, you know, his brethren, his circumstances weren't important to him. Yeah. And as the the passage there in Philippians, he, he talked about changing circumstances that it wasn't always the same thing that he was going through. He went through changes. A lot of them were difficult. And like you said, the last two years for a lot of people have been a time of change and difficulties and things are not the way they used to be. And it's very easy to do, you know, just resent the way the things have changed or what has happened. But again, it's going back to this idea of not focusing on what's good and not focusing on what God's blessed us with, but instead just, you know, focusing on what, you know, what we lost or what we had adjustments we had to make or whatever it might be. But uh, one, uh, since before we run out of time, I do want to get into one more, one final question here. Why is it, and we've kind of talked about this a little bit, but why is contentment so difficult for so many people, even though we have been greatly blessed, especially in this country? Why is it, do you think that this is so hard for us, whether Christians or, or not, but, but even those of us in the church, why is it so difficult for us to be content despite the abundance of blessings that we have? Well, uh, we were talking about um, the technology, you know, smartphones, uh, Instagram, uh, just the internet in general, Facebook, social media. We see like a snapshot of what everyone else is doing. And it's usually the most amazing thing that they've done in the last week or month or whatever it is. And they're showcasing that. And we start to think that's what their, their life is like all the time. And we start comparing ourselves to them. And we say, wow, my life is really boring. <laughs> you know, I don't get to go all those places. I haven't gone. You know, my uh, my son saw something on TV this afternoon that somebody was skiing. He's like, I want to go skiing. Like, I, I mean, uh, snow, you know, in the snow. And, uh, you know, we're probably not going to be able to do that this winter, you know. But, uh, you know, and I think that's that's really what we see is we, we have envy of those around us. Instead of saying, hey, you know, things are things are not things are pretty good, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just difficult to be content when there's a constant barrage of, of all these other things that, you know, whether it's the American dream, whether it's just the American opulence, you know, just whatever it is, it's just, it's constantly bombarding you. And uh, of course we've got, you know, what is it? Uh, the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday, you know, we got to go out and get all those deals. Yeah. I used to work in a jewelry store and you'd have crazy people coming there at five in the morning to buy a two carat diamond ring or diamond bracelet and the little diamonds had little black inclusions in them and and uh, a week later they'd bring it back and say 
you know, what's wrong with these diamonds? I said, well, you got two carats of diamonds for $99. What were you expecting to get? <laughs> these are industrial grade diamonds. They're, they're, they're more useful on a, a diamond bit saw than they are on a tennis bracelet, but you wanted that $99 special, you know, it's just the, just the materialism, you know, and, yeah. and we're getting right into that time of year where there's that just, you know, and, and our kids are, are susceptible to it. You know, they're trying to write out lists for presents or whatever. And, you know, if I'm good, can I get this? Can I have that? And, and, and their room is full right now. Yeah. And it's a top thing, you know, um, so it's difficult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think when we, what we're going with what you said there with, with everything that we see around us, whether it's, you know, on social media, we see what other people are doing, what other people have. We have there's advertisements out there that that make us think that well, you have to have this, that you're missing out if you don't get to do this or whatever it might be. And really, all of it comes down to this idea of being distracted from what's really important. And the passage I wanted to bring up here uh, before we quit was Second Corinthians chapter twelve, beginning in verse seven where Paul said there that because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning this, I implore the Lord three times that it might leave me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. He was able to say, despite the difficulties that he had, and he implored the Lord three times that whatever this thorn in the flesh was, he implored the Lord that it might leave him. And he would have been in a much better situation. He would have felt a lot better about about his condition, if whatever that was, was gone. And so he implored the Lord that it might leave, but the Lord said that my grace is sufficient for you. That when we get to the point where where we are not content, it's really we're losing sight of that, that the grace of God is sufficient for us, that he has given us everything that we need. He is continuing to provide for us. He's promised us what is far greater than anything we have or could hope to have here, we need to not lose sight of that. And when we lose sight of that, that's when we start to lose this idea of contentment. So as we draw this to a close, we think about all the ways that God has blessed us and we recognize that we're intentional about expressing our gratitude to him. We're going to enjoy more contentment. And we'll be reminding ourselves as we express this of the fact that we do have everything we need. We have the assurance that God will take care of us and will continue to bless us. So these ideas of gratitude, expressing gratitude, and enjoying contentment or happiness in life, those are going to be connected. So that survey that suggested that there is a connection the Bible also suggests that there's a connection between those as well. So Christopher, before we close, do you have anything that you wanted to, to add before we, before we wrap up? Yeah. One of the lines in this uh, survey basically just said, if you want to experience an increase in life satisfaction, just express gratitude more often. And I think that's what we need to do. If you want to have a better life, then you need to be more grateful and express it verbally mm -hmm. right. to those around you. Yeah, to those around us, to God, and that's going to Amen. Amen. That's going to help help us recognize our blessings, and we're going to enjoy life more. We're going to be content with what we have. But that's all for this week. Thank you for listening to the Plain Bible Teaching Podcast. I hope you found this to be interesting, informative, and helpful. For links to the story we talked about, as well as other related materials, you can check out the show notes for this episode at plainbibleteaching.com slash podcast slash 11 24 22 and if you have a minute to rate and review the podcast and share it with others that would always be appreciated and if you're listening to this remember that we are also uploading video versions of this to the plain bible teaching youtube channel so that's available to you as well and if you see a link to a news story or have some topic that you think would make for a good discussion 
send that to me at andy at plainbibleteaching.com. I always appreciate receiving those suggestions. But thanks again for listening, and I hope to talk to you again next week.